Windows 98 was one of those golden ages of computing, in my opinion. Uh, it's a, it was a really, really good operating system. It wasn't without its faults. It certainly had its problems. There's no doubt about that. But the support that it had, the software that was developed for it, um, its quirky nature at times, just everything about it, I absolutely loved. And not only that, I spent quite a few years supporting businesses with Windows 98 operating systems on their desks. And yes, you could argue that they shouldn't have been using Windows 98 because of its lack of security. They should have been using Windows NT and etc., uh, etc. Et but fact is, a lot of businesses, they were running these home operating systems on their desks. Uh, and it was it was fine for the most part because you had to use security on the servers. We can talk about that a little later, but what I wanted to say was if you want to run Windows 98, ideally, if you don't want to spend a load of... Ideally, you want to be doing it on original hardware, but if you can't or don't want to do that, running it in a, in a virtual box is a great solution, except it really doesn't work very well in virtual box it's in fact it's absolutely awful it runs really slow because uh, cpu usage is 100 percent all the time and it's just absolutely horrible to use and you, you know the graphic default graphics drivers you can't install other graphics drivers so it looks absolutely awful so there's all sorts of problems and when other there's a lot of other youtube videos i had a look to see how other people were doing this and no one has really done a video on how to get this working perfectly in every every respect you know to to run it with ACPI support to uh, use uh, decent graphics drivers that give you 32-bit graphics and uh, and high resolution screens um, connecting to the internet all of the things you need to do there's I couldn't find a video that covers it all uh, so I thought I would do one uh, from start to finish and show you how it's done to get it working so it's really really good so you can run any software that would work on original hardware as far as I can see will work on on this in VirtualBox um, and we I will show you exactly where to get all of the software where to download images of Windows 98 license keys where to get the the graphics card drivers from everything you need I will make sure that I give you links to it and and show you in the video where to find them. So without further ado, let's start off. So I'm at virtualbox.org on the downloads page. I'm doing this on Windows 10. If you're doing it on a different platform, everything should be pretty much the same. But I can only show you um, how I'm doing it, and that is on Windows 10. So I, in my case, I need to click on uh, Windows Hosts. So we click on that and download it. Now I'm not going to download that now, actually. I'm going to cancel that because I've already done it. Um, this is one I prepared earlier. So let's start the install. The install is pretty simple. Most things we keep as default. On this page we keep the default. I don't want uh, a shortcut in the quick launch bar so I'm going to untick that. I'm going to leave register file associations because I'm pretty sure they're unique to VirtualBox so that should be fine and I'm not running any virtualization anyway. Um, yep, yeah, it says it's going to connect me from the uh, from networks for a moment, but that's fine. And let's install it. So that will only take a moment. And yet yeah, we want to start it after installation. And here we are. So th this is what you're going to be faced with. In this area here, you will have your operating systems as you create more and more. Um, we want to create our first one, which is going to be Windows 98 SE. Um, and let's just put demo. The amount of memory I'm going to do. Now, I wouldn't go over 512 megabytes of RAM. I haven't tried it with any more than that, so I can't speak from first hand experience. But I have read that if you go above that, um, it will cause problems. You might have problems with it crashing because it can't handle any more memory than that. Uh, create a virtual disk now, yes. Let's click create. Two gigabytes is fine for what we're doing. Uh, virtual uh, box disk image is fine for what we're doing. Read up on some of the others if you want. This is fine. Dynamically in, uh, allocated is fine as well. 
let's click create and we're done now I'm going to leave that we're going to be coming back here in a second we're going to go into the settings to make some more changes but first what we need to do I've uh, let's just go back to the home page so you want to go to this page here winworldpc.com and this will allow us to download a copy of Windows 98 and even provides a license key uh, um, let's go to library yep and then click on the Windows 98 link and you'll see here we've got some serial keys I know that this one here works I've only ever tried the top one that bottom one probably works as well but we want to download this one here Windows 98 second edition OEM full I've already done it because that would take a little while to download so there it is um, in my case I've used if I right click on here you'll see I've got 7-zip installed 7-zip is uh, an open source archiving program compression program uh, and it allows us to do this if you haven't got any program like that installed like WinZip or WinRAR or 7-zip as I've got here I would recommend going to install 7-zip so go onto Google type in 7-zip and go through the download and install process and once you've done that come back here and you'll be able to do what I just did which was after you downloaded the uh, this file here this Windows 98 file go to 7-zip click open, Ar open archive and then just drag it onto your desktop which is what I've done there uh, if we go into this folder here we'll see that we've got this file here Windows 98 second edition ISO and that is what we're going to need in just a second so let's go back to VirtualBox Manager, click on Settings, and if we go to Storage, and then click on this bottom one here, there's a little image of a little CD-ROM, and then click on the little CD-ROM image over here, choose um, the optical disk file, and we want to go to Desktop, Windows 98 second edition double click on that and that is now attached let's just have a look at a couple more options here we've already set up the base memory at 512 megabytes that's fine I should point out with processors I don't think there could possibly be any benefit to having more than one CPU because Windows 98 uh, was only compatible with a single thread with a single CPU so that won't help you acceleration I think all of this is fine I haven't had any problems with any of that but um, yeah I think everything else we can just leave as is if we go to network we've got one uh, network adapter installed attached to NAT that will be fine for what we're doing uh, shared folders don't work with Windows 98 so there's nothing you can do with that um, general Uh, yep nothing else to do so click OK and this is now where the fun part starts what a lot of other videos will show you to do is to just run push start and the Windows setup program will start just go through all of the prompts and there you're done it won't work well it will work you'll get a Windows 98 up and running but it will be really slow and horrible uh, we need to do it in a way that enables ACPI, um, which is a way of managing uh, the CPU processes. So it takes a little longer this way, but I'll go through all of the steps. It's no problem. Right, first thing I need to do is go to View, and because this is absolutely tiny, change it to Scale Factor 200. Now, go to Boot from CD-ROM we want to in the first instance we do want to do start windows 98 setup from cd-rom but the only reason we're doing this is to form is to create a partition and format the partition and once we've done that we have to do things a little bit differently uh, so in the first instance we select option number one so give it a minute and we are faced with this page here um, we just click enter 
and then it says configure we we can up and down arrows we can choose one of these options the one we want is configure unallocated disk space recommended so hit enter and yes we want to enable large disk support and uh, it's now uh, going to restart the computer so just push enter ignore the thing about the floppy disk so once again we want to boot from the CD-ROM once again we do want to start Windows 98 setup from the CD-ROM when we do this a third time we don't we're going to choose the third option is it no we're going to choose the second option sorry but for now once again choose the first option and I'll be back in a moment when the page has loaded I paused the video there um, for a minute or two you can see now that it's formatting drive C 30% of the way through uh, once that's finished formatting I shall be back again so that's finished um, so now we need to uh, push escape not enter that's very important if we push enter it'll start the setup process and we don't want to do that so remember push escape and then uh, any key to restart the system and this time we want to boot from the hard disk oh no we don't sorry my mistake <laughs> let's just push any key and restart it again we do want to boot from the CD-ROM again because it will give us those three options and this time we want to start the computer with CD-ROM support so click enter so here we are then at a command prompt so we can go through the different drives like this uh, have a look at the directory there's nothing in there we want to create a a folder a directory in the C drive called Win98 if we have a look now we can see there's one directory called Win98 uh, and now the CD-ROM drive or the attached um, uh, Windows 98 install file should be in the D drive so there we go we can see uh, this directory called Win98 is here and we want to copy that um, into that directory we just created or sorry we want to copy all of the contents of that into the directory that we've just created so how do we do that I think we type copy D colon backslash win 98 and then a space um, C colon backslash win 98 I think that's right that'll take just a moment okay that's uh, finished copying so let's just go back to the C drive and have a look in that win 98 directory yep that's perfect so now we want to move into the Windows 98 directory then we want to type setup forward slash sp uh, p space j and that will ensure that ACPI is installed with the operating system. So now we push enter. It's going to do a scan disk and start copying the files. Now this does take ages. What I'm going to do is pause the video and I'll come back every time there's something that we need to um, do throughout the setup process but we're most of the way okay then first page um, yes we do want to install in the C Windows directory or create it so we click next um, on this window we can just uh, use typical setup that's fine I'm just wondering actually Actually, let's uh, do custom because there's something we can do in there that we can use once it installs. So, if we click on accessories, click on details, you don't have to do this obviously, but 
it gives us something to do once it's installed. I'm just going to add one thing, which is games, which is uh, Minesweeper and uh, Hearts and Solitaire. You know, those classic games. So we click on Next. Um, I'm just going to leave the computer name as the default there, which is just some random letters. Keyboard layout, regional settings, obviously do those appropriate for you. Um, this is really slow by the way and this will all be sorted out once we've got some uh, other things installed such as the graphics drivers it will be lightning quick but for now we've got to put up with this really sluggish and right this window here this is to create a startup disk we don't need to do that just click cancel you're not cancelling the ins installation oh hang on a minute okay no I don't want to quit setup I thought you could just cancel the well there you go it's been a long time you have got to start the process of creating a startup disk but we can opt out of it in a minute right so we just click cancel because we don't have a floppy disk drive And now it's going to start copying files, so this is going to take ages as well. So we'll leave it to it, and I'll be back in a bit. So here's the next uh, part. Setup is now ready to restart a computer. Remove all disk. Well, we can't remove disk because there are no disks in there, but we click OK. And click on Restart now. We want to choose Boot from Hard Disk now, not Boot from CD. So I think this is the first time we see the Windows 98 splash screen, um, but it still takes quite a while to install from this point onwards, so there will be a lot more pausing still, but we'll get through it. Okay, first step, let's put our name in here, anything you like, don't need to put company in can if you like obviously um, yes I accept the agreement and now we want to put the license key in now the license key uh, where do we find that oh come on open up uh, if we scroll up here it's just here so we can put this over the top and just copy it in so RW 9MG I'm going to pause the video so I've copied that exactly as that is there so when we click on next that will be fine and click on finish but no we haven't finished there's still a way to go so I'm going to pause the video come back when there's something else to do okay so we've got to do something here we've just got to this should all be correct other than the time zone so we can just move that down to my time zone let's see, change that to whatever yours is I really don't need to tell you that come on then it's so slow right good oops that's what we want and we want to apply that before closing it and we can carry on right so the install process is pretty much finished uh, it's done a restart and here we are at this screen here it's asking for a network password we're not on a network so just click cancel to that it's just going to install a few drivers uh, but in just a minute we should have our Windows page up right oh there you go right so we need to make sure that's unticked and then click on here to close it and then that'll be gone 
until we get these graphics drivers sorted out everything is horrendously slow it's absolutely awful so we just got to sort of bear with it until we get to that point all right okay we can just click on close okay so that's got that out of the way right next thing to do then is to sort these graphics drivers out and the way to do that we I'm going to include a link to this file here you'll see this one here it's std win.iso and in order to use it in our operating system we need to attach it uh, the way we did the Windows 98 CD so to do that unfortunately we've got to shut this down click OK and once this window here disappears then we can change the settings there you go that's gone so click on settings go to uh, storage we've got a couple of options we can add another CD drive if we want to but we don't need this Windows 98 one now so we're just going to choose a virtual optical drive go to downloads and this STD hyphen win so we've we've just changed it click OK and then start again and once it's restarted I'll show you what to do next okay so back to the network password screen so let's just click cancel and then we want to double click on my computer when we get the chance and now the CD-ROM drive will be we'll have the CD we want attached which are the files to install the graphics drivers here we go right so we want to install this Cytec Display Doctor now I should tell you something about this they stopped making and supporting this a bit the business has gone they went out of business oh dear right come on and what I'm installing here is a 20 day, 21 day fully functional trial but I should be able to find somewhere on the internet I've got to find it yet is a key so that we can set this up permanently in fact I've got it somewhere but I just can't remember what I've done with it so I'll find it and hopefully be able to include it but it is out there on the internet uh, express installation yep that's absolutely fine and start install so once this is finished installing I will be back so that's finished installing but we've got to restart the computer so I shall be back once it's restarted okay so we're back to the network login prompt And we can close this window and I'm not going to double click on that Cytec display doctor icon there because I think yeah it opens up by default right so this is where it gets a little bit tricky because I'll be honest I haven't done this for a long time and I remember it being a real pain to set up before so we want to select a, a monitor so all I did was I s selected the largest Super VGA monitor. Now I think we need to move this window. All right, so let's um, go back home again. And 
Oh, come on. Graphics adapter. Graphics adapter. Nothing we can do with that. So display driver. Um, yep, yeah, so active driver, standard PCI graphics adapter. So we want to click there. Um, and then just change that to SciTech Nucleus Driver and then click apply. Now, yep, yeah, this is going to ask us to restart. So this is going to restart. I'm not going to do anything other than let it restart and then I should be back. Right. So here we are back. Let's just give that a moment to. Yep, yeah, we're OK. Right. So right click on the desktop, click on properties. Right. Let's just minimize this a second and try again. Okay, right click properties here we go that's good and then we want to go to settings oh this is painful I don't know why this has never happened before where the mouse pointer pops out the top and out the side before I don't know what's going on to be honest but okay let's uh Enlarge the window, that seems to solve that problem. Okay, so now, ah, high, high bit color, 256 colors, that's not right. Okay, I don't think we're quite there yet then. Let's just apply that and restart it and see where we are. It could be that we need to change the uh, settings within SciTech itself. Well, yeah, so I've literally done nothing other than restart it. And it looks like everything sorted itself out. So if we now go to Properties and Settings, We've got true color, 32 bit, and we have all the way up to 1600 by 1200, which was the monitor that we chose. Uh, but actually, I think, well, let, let's uh, let's try that size, and I want to apply it without restarting. Ugh. Yeah, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. So now we've got true color. So that's how you do that. Uh, we can close display doctor now. So what's next? Well, uh, connecting to the internet. Uh, this seems to have baffled a few people out there. So let's cover this. If we if we click on this set up MSN internet access, this essentially only allows you to set up the internet through a modem so it doesn't matter what options you choose you're going to fail you can't do it that is, that's not how it's done so just close that in fact we can delete that we don't want it what we need to do is go to the control panel so go to start settings control panel have you noticed this is now working perfectly. The speed of it is absolutely great. Uh, none of that horrible stuttering that we had before. So we want to click on internet options, double click on that, and then go to connections. Um, I was going to say go to LAN settings, you don't. You go to set up here, the internet connection wizard. Uh, and then this third option here, I want to set up the internet connection manually or I want to connect through a local area network. That's what we want. Oops. I'm using a mouse pad on my laptop 
and it's a little bit too sensitive for this um, so I might need it'll be a lot easier if I was using a mouse but um, I connect through a local area network yes that's correct click next uh, automatic discovery of proxy server yep that's fine and do we want to set up an internet mail account now no I don't think we need to do that I think we might have covered that uh, next and then do we want to connect to the internet immediately well I guess we do because we want to test it so click finish uh, this is probably going to go to a page that doesn't exist anymore so that's in fact let's click stop uh, go to tools internet options and we'll just change this to google.com so now when we click on home take us to Google so there we go we're connected to the internet that's working absolutely perfectly everything's running quickly uh, we can close that um, so what do we have next we already know sounds working one thing that I think we definitely should do is get rid of we're going to sounds and then if we go to is it just start up or windows start up or start windows there you go if we get rid of that change it to num so when it starts up we don't get that music that's an important job done so that's the point that we need to leave this video um, we've got everything up and running there is a little bit more to talk about uh, when we try and get some applications and games running on this uh, there might be some additional changes that we need to make to get everything running optimally uh, but that's what you need to do to get things up and running in 32-bit uh, color and uh, any resolution you like and uh, get the internet up and running and all of those good things and uh, and, and running smoothly uh, basically uh, so until the next video thank you for watching I hope this hasn't been too long and too I'm, it, it has been a little bit long and tedious at times I'm sure but I wanted to make sure I covered everything that I needed to uh, so until next time uh, thanks again for watching and bye for now